the Daytona 500, the UEFA Champions League Final, the World Series, the Pac-12 Championship, and the Big Ten Championship. The world's biggest events are on Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports! Daytona Beach, Florida, NASCAR making headlines, the new track surface. 20-year-old Joey Logano hits 203 miles per hour. We are witnessing the fastest speeds since the 80s. Come on inside. It's Daytona International Speedway, and the curtain is going up. The stage is set, the drivers are front and center. Superheroes behind the wheel with super-like power. The best of the best drivers are here. Shootout next on Fox. Seems like the world was watching Fox last Sunday for the Super Bowl. Tonight we come to you from the World Center of Speed and the legendary Daytona International Speedway as Fox Sports presents the Budweiser Shootout. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the pole. He's won this race twice and had great success at this track. Junior hoping for a fast start. Jimmy Johnson starting from the last row. Five straight championships for the driver of the 48 team, but he has not been the dominator in this race. And Tony Stewart on the front row has won this race three times. The weather tonight cold and cooperative, but a good crowd on hand. The racing will be highly competitive. And we welcome you to the Hollywood Hotel. Hi, thanks for being with us. Every weekend, America gathers for NASCAR right here. We have the driver, the crew chief, Darrell Waltrip, Jeff Hammond, I'm Chris Myers, and the 11th season of NASCAR on Fox has begun. A lot of changes, but we're still the same. No, it's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've missed you, really. I miss you, man. I have, too. I missed him a little bit, too. <laughs> All right, and, and nobody's missing Jimmy Johnson, a former athlete of the year, five straight NASCAR championships working on a six. So the buzz already. Give me a driver with some temperament, personality, good enough to take on and stop Jimmy Johnson. No, first of all, I got to tell you, Jimmy Johnson is the most influential guy in NASCAR right now. He's influenced every driver in the garage area. He's got them working out. He's got them on diets. He's got them watching what they eat. Everybody wants to be like Jimmy. Kevin Harvick changed his dial tone on his or his uh, password on his cell phone to 4848. So every time he had to remember it and think about Jimmy Johnson, they get on the treadmill and they're running with their tongue hanging out and they're saying, I hate Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson is in every driver's head right now. Yeah, they're obsessed. He still didn't give us somebody who's going to stop Jimmy Johnson. Nobody. Uh, nobody. nobody. Uh oh, come nobody. on. Give me somebody. Rick Hendrick made a change right now with all those crew chiefs over there to get their drivers set up like they need to. The guys on the pole, Dale Earnhardt Jr., this guy Steve Letard is a crew chief. He may be able to do it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, he hasn't won a race in 93 races. We'll watch him tonight. Well, if he doesn't do something, Mr. Hendrick's going to fix him. All right, how about the track? You know, makeover shows are popular. We, first time since Daytona has been re repaved since the late 70s. What effect will it have on not only this race, but the Daytona 500? Well, we've already seen, Chris, that these two-car breakaways last night in practice, over 200 miles an hour, 203 miles an hour. I believe the speeds will be higher than that tonight. High speeds comes taking high risk. You got closing rates that are sometimes 10 or 15 miles an hour faster than the cars you're catching up on. That's going to create some havoc. You got a car closing that fast, you go the wrong way, and all of a sudden, bam, in the night. No tire wear. Right now, this racetrack's so smooth, no tire wear. Drivers can go over where they want to. It's going to be wild. It's going to be unpredictable. Two-car tango. So you're going to be That's out on the it. dance That's floor. It. Kurt Busch said somebody may leave you. If you're out there, you'll take whoever you need to dance with. Dancing with the like cars. And you'll dancing be, with uh, the Don't cars. start dancing. He has to go upstairs <laughs> to the play-by-play -play booth. Uh, we're going to get ready for the race. But uh, let's enjoy the sweet sounds of country music star Laura Bell Bundy. She's here tonight. 
pretty strange, you didn't want to talk. Mm, there's a pep in your walk. Smiling a lot when you look at your phone. There's a change in your tone. Been through your pockets and smelled your shirts. I don't wear back the body works. Should have seen my sign, she was sneaking around. in the bed you've made. Four drivers ready to go. 75 laps and a break in between. Is there a little mystery in the moonlight tonight? The Budweiser shootout. It's the start of something big. Tomorrow, the front row decided for next Sunday's Daytona 500. Tonight, we're glad you're with us. NASCAR on Fox from Daytona International Speedway and the Budweiser shootout just about ready to roll. NASCAR on Fox welcoming you back live here to Daytona International Speedway. Remember, next Sunday, the Great American Race, the Daytona 500. Tomorrow, who will be on the front row? Tonight, the best of the best, 24 drivers in two segments, a 25-lap race and then a break in a 50-lap run. Before we go fast, let's slow down and pause for opening ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as the Daytona Beach Police Department Honor Guard present our nation's colors. Please remain standing and welcome Pastor Bob Hadley of Westside Baptist Church of Daytona Beach as he offers tonight's invocation. Let's pray. God, we thank you for loving us as you do. Father, I thank you for NASCAR's commitment to ask your blessings on this sport and its wonderful fans. God, be with the drivers and the pit crews. Keep them safe. Help them to do their best. Be with our troops, both at home and abroad. Protect them and bring them home soon. God bless America once again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please welcome Mercury recording artist Laura Bell Bundy as she performs our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the
Exciting scene here tonight at Straight Ahead. We're going to hear from Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jimmy Johnson. Stay with us. Here comes Kevin Harvick in the 29. That was a power move right there, baby. Harvick has won this race. Kevin Harvick will win back-to-back -back Budweiser shootouts. No drivers won this race three consecutive times, but Kevin Harvick, starting from row nine tonight, can pull that off if he can get into victory lane. Now back to the track, and this $20 million repaving job here at Daytona began last July. All four inches of asphalt were ripped out, replaced by a high-tech mix. Repaving finished in December, and the effect, we're going to see more of it tonight and in the 500. Last night, watch Mark Martin and Casey Kane go at it. The new surface smooth and fast, creating a lot of opportunity. The last time this track repaved before the 79 season, the Daytona 500 ended that year with a legendary last lap wreck, a Richard Petty win, and then a fist fight between drivers. So if history is any guide, we'll expect the unexpected tonight. And for this year's uh, Daytona 500, you actually part of that brawl, but we won't pull out the video let's talk about just that. yet. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the Daytona 500. Kurt Busch said, I'm going to use tonight a lot to not only try to win, but to find out what my car, what I can do for that race. And I think a lot of guys who have won here and run well at Daytona, like Ryan Newman, Jeff Gordon, even Kevin Harvick, they're going to take advantage of try to figure out what it's going to take to get hooked up to be able to get to the front, get in the right position to win, not only tonight, but the 500. And the 500, of course, you earn your way to that pole position. How are the post positions drawn for the race tonight? Well, in Budweiser fashion, you get a bottle, you pull out a number, it's just random. And you remember, Ryan Newman had that upside down ride. Dale Earnhardt Jr. fortunately grabbed the pole position and our Matt Yokin talked to him moments ago. Dale Earnhardt Jr. chose wisely scoring the pole with all the different variables for this year's event. What's the strategy to keep that 88 car up front? I don't know. We're all going to learn a little bit in this race, but uh, you know, we everybody just kind of saw how drafting went, and we'll just try to see if that'll work in the race. So well, the first 25 laps don't really matter. Um, so we'll just kind of try to make to the end of that and uh, see if we can have a pretty good position for the restart on that uh, 50 lap run and. Uh, who you go down pit road with and get off how you get off pit road if it's a green flag pit stop is going to be real real important so many questions waiting for answers tonight thank you Matt, and thank you junior as jimmy johnson gets uh, ready to roll here hasn't run as well in this race recently but he's a big picture guy a championship guy so you can get him off his game tonight no laid back conservative racing in this one so let's head track side for the command and now, race fans, it's time for those most famous words in motorsports. Here to give the command, please welcome your Grand Marshal, star of the upcoming thriller, Drive Angry 3D, in theaters February 25th, actress Amber Heard. Gentlemen, start your engines! In baseball, it's the opening pitch in football, the coin toss here. We're waiting for those words we love to hear this time of year. Gentlemen, start your engines. That's straight ahead. That's Car on Fox and the Budweiser shootout at Daytona International Speedway brought to you by Budweiser from the Hollywood Hotel and the pre-race show. We are going to head upstairs. That's right. Throw out the record books because we're in uncharted territory. I can promise you that. All right. So Daryl has joined Larry McReynolds and uh, Mike Joy going to call the race as they always do for NASCAR on Fox. Mike, you ready to go? We're ready, Chris, for the first NASCAR checkered flag of the stock car portion of Speed Weeks. They roll off pit road, and there's a great sense of anticipation and wonder. I wonder if we'll see pack racing. I wonder if we'll see cars pair up through the entire 75 laps. I wonder what will happen on pit stops. There's a lot of unknowns, Daryl. Could even be a Wilma or two in there. Will my car make it? Will my car run? Will my car handle? Who oh, knows? 11 years and some things don't ever change. <laughs> but you know what? Fans have asked for a better looking car. This year we've got it. This thing looks like a race car. Got a nice new nose on it. Got the big spoiler on the back. Fans have asked for high speeds at Daytona and Talladega. We've got that. So folks, we got everything you asked for. Plus we're going to have some exciting 
bump drafting tonight that's really, really, really going to make it real unknown who's going to win this thing. And you got a couple of things that don't always go together, sprint race and strategy. Yeah, this is not a 500 or 400 mile race. This is a short sprint race on Saturday night. You don't have time to let things settle down. You've got to go and you've got to go in a hurry. And I kind of get a sense that we've got some teammates back there that have fast race cars. They're going to be coming to the front. Joey Logano and Kyle Busch, I think they'll be going up through their fast race cars. Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson starting to back. I think they'll be coming up through there. You heard Dale Earnhardt Jr. say, I think the wild card, that pit stop that these guys will have to make in that second 50 laps, and a lot on those driver's shoulders, how they get on and off pit road. Especially if they have to make that stop under green. They drew for starting positions, Earnhardt and Tony Stewart up front. It is a two-heat format. 25 laps, then 50 laps. Caution flags count. Caution laps too. 10-minute pit window where you can make any adjustment you could in a normal NASCAR Sprint Cup race. Double file restarts, green-white checker if needed. We've had that three times in this event. And thinking of three times, there's a fellow who's trying to win this for the third time in a row, Daryl. Let's see if we can dial him up. Kevin Harvey, kids at DW. Got a copy, buddy? And four, Daryl. Hey, man, you're, gonna, you're going for something tonight nobody's ever done. You're going for three Budweiser shootouts in a row. What's the chances? I think the chances are good, um, but you never know how these uh, restrictor plate races are going to shake out. So we're going to go like crazy from the beginning and run 75 laps as hard as we can run. And it's all going to be just about putting yourself in position with the, with the right cars at the end to, to try to pull that last lap move. You know, you've got one of the best records on the restrictor plate racing over the last three or four years. What makes you so good here at Daytona and Talladega? I think I'm lucky just to, to drive good cars, and, and we've been able to uh, have a lot of experience with the spotters, and everybody's worked together for a long time. So when he tells me I'm clear, I just turn left, and, and that usually works out pretty good. And, um, I don't know. you got to be lucky, too. So good cars and a little luck. Well, you got a, uh, a pretty good-looking car there uh, that – Nice new paint job. Uh, I guess people will be able to find you out there, all right? I got another question for you. Your nickname is Happy, are you? Uh, I'm always happy. Uh, we just got to thank everybody from Budweiser. The car looks awesome, and just can't wait to get racing. All right, my friend. Have a good run. We'll be watching. Thank you. Can't wait to get racing. That's the feeling of everybody here in Daytona and watching tonight on Fox. Joining us, our NASCAR on Fox all-star pit crew, the best in the business. We'll start with our uh, senior reporter, Dick Bergren. Greg Biffle has a very simple strategy for tonight's race. He's crashed under the last three shootouts, so finish the race and be the lead car in a two-car draft coming under the checkered first. Steve Burns. Well, Dick Denny Hamlin won his race in 2006 as an unknown rookie. Since that night, he's won races, almost won a championship, and is now buddies with none other than Michael Jordan, owner of the Charlotte Bobcats. Little uncertainty tonight, though. Not happy with the transmission at the close of practice last night, Matt Yoakum. Without a teammate in tonight's field, Kurt Busch is more like the Lone Ranger. He was jokingly lobbying Greg Biffle, saying, I'm an ex Roush Fenway employee. Help me out. But really, he worked primarily in practice with young Regan Smith. So look for the 78 to be the 22's wingman tonight. Chris Devota? Race fans are seeing a lot less of Tony Stewart these days, not because he's hiding, but because there's a lot less of Tony Stewart to see. After losing about 12 pounds in the offseason, Stewart is built for speed. A three-time winner of this event, He's also on the front row. Mike. Thanks, Krista. The lineup decided by draw, and there is your front row as we have a look through the Budweiser starting grid for tonight's 33rd Bud shootout. Five wins between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart, Carl Edwards and Denny Hamlin, Casey Kane, Bobby Labonte, the 2000 champion, Clint Boyer, and Ryan Newman, the 500 winner in 08. Derek Cope won it in 90, and Michael Waltrip, a two-time 500 winner. Jeff Gordon, Greg Biffle, talent all the way through this lineup. The defending 500 champ, McMurray, his teammate, Montoya. Rookie of the year, Kevin Conway, and always formidable Jeff Burton. Kevin Harvick going for the three-peat, and Kurt Busch, Mark Martin, and Matt Kenseth. Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, teammates way in the back. Jimmy Johnson drew first. He drew 23rd, along with former Rookie of the year, Regan Smith. That's the lineup, 24 deep, 30 drivers eligible, 24 elect to start. Lots of talent, man, just lots of talent. The Chevy Camaro pace car brings them across to the one to go sign.
Tony Stewart carrying new colors. Mobile One joins Stewart Haas Racing for this year. And Casey Kane in the Red Bull Toyota numbered four, changed from 82 last year. Kurt Busch trades the deuce for the double deuce and the Pennzoil Dodge for Roger Penske. Bobby Labonte moves over to the 47 team. Kroger and Reese Toe Power tonight. Michael Waltrip, two time champ, and here are our speed lines for tonight. The two car tango. How far can you go before things get too hot under the hood when you're paired up? Pit stop, synchronicity. No catch can man. No problem. Who will make the adjustments? And surface tension. As we saw earlier today in the ARCA 200, Bobby Gerhardt won the race because everybody had so much grip. They held the low groove and nobody could break out and pass. And things that you normally worry about down here, you know, like tires, that doesn't seem to be an issue. Fuel mileage, that seems to be an issue. Speed, that seems to be an issue. Lots of things to watch here tonight. Yeah, and I just think you mentioned that this place has so much grip with this new surface. I think all of these drivers, they feel like Superman with their race car. They're going to try to go places where maybe they shouldn't go at times. They're going to feel like Superman. They're going to look like Spider-Man when they get all hooked together. And if you're looking for Jeff Gordon, new colors on his car. AARP's Drive to End Hunger will sponsor Gordon most of this 2011 season. Up in the 31 degree banking of turn three for the 33rd Budweiser shootout in February 1979. Buddy Baker led 18 of the 20 laps, kept his foot to the floor, and bested a nine car field to take home $50,000. And the second best that day, DW. Yes, sir. I followed him right. Just, I just stayed right behind him. Thought it was a pretty good move. Two rounds of practice, a lot of bump drafting, a lot of that two-car tango. What are we going to see in this first 25 laps? We're about to find out as the pace car makes the hard left turn to pit road. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2011 NASCAR season. The flag, green flag, get ready to go in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, boys. Stay till the exit of turn two, and the pairing up has begun right at the front. Earnhardt Jr. with Carl Edwards on the inside, Tony Stewart with Denny Hamlin. But what we have seen throughout testing and throughout practice, that Toyota, like that 11 of Denny Hamlin, it can really give another car a good push. I think where you're going to see the speed is from cars that are behind these front four. As they pick up momentum, they will pick up speed and draft, and they'll be able to blow by these front guys. Here comes uh, Casey Kane in the four with uh, Boyer right behind him, giving him a big push as they head off and at one. They caught the leaders. They split the two lead pairs and are going for the front. Kane on the inside with the yellow car of Clint Boyer. See, this is so different than what we saw in practice. In practice, they'd get two by two by two, but you didn't have all these cars up there grouped up like we are now. They can't pass each other and take off like they did in practice. We're going to have some close racing. And I think what you'll see, we're starting to see it there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the 88 getting that push by Carl Edwards in the 99. They'll almost run over that group in front of them. But they got nowhere to go, and that's the whole thing. That's why it's so different than practice. Threading the needle, Boyer. Stewart tried to close the hole and couldn't do it. Boyer to the lead. And Casey Kane in that four was a sitting duck, but now he gets help from Carl Edwards in the 99. You're going to have to really anticipate. You're going to have to anticipate every move you make because if you wait, it's too late. In the back, they're way three wide. Wait for me. Wait for me. Staying pretty grouped up right now. I like what I'm seeing. Boyer and Earnhardt out front. This is what these guys have been working on for three days down here testing for yesterday all during practice. Two car breakaways. Get hooked up. 
leave the field behind, but I don't think you're going to be able to get too far ahead tonight. Three pairs of cars leading a pack. And boy, they are snarling in that pack. And this is two cars that we thought would be making a move. We're riding with Mark Martin in that five. We talked to Kevin Harvick in the 29 car, and you can see with Jimmy Johnson in the 48 pushed them, these guys are trying to work their way up there in a hurry. You just, you can only go so, you know, when you got cars in front of you, cars to your left and right, you just got to wait. You got to be real patient here and wait for things to open up a little bit. Watch number 97 in blue, Kevin Conway. Whoa, Kevin. Oh, boy, he had a little too much help from Montoya right there. I think he was quite ready for that. Last year's Rookie of the Year. Conway, there's Jeff Gordon throttling up the outside. One of Conway's best finishes came right here last year in the July race. They look coupled together, don't they? It's not the Chattanooga choo-choo, but it's uh, close to it. Clint Boyer leads them across to complete five of 25 laps in segment one of two. See a couple of teammates right there. Kevin Harvick in the 29. We're riding with him, pushing his teammate, Jeff Burton, in the 31. They know if they'll stay just like this, that they may get right up there. Now we got a battle for the lead. Yeah, but especially when these guys get side by side like this, that is really going to suck that back crowd right back up to them. Legendary engineer Casey Jones drove the old 97. Casey Kane is in the new number four. Toyota and a Ford working together. Trying to overhaul what is now a four car draft. And if they stay Whoa, like this, Junior. Oh, Junior, man, he just put a move on, on Boyer right there. And of course, Boyer. But you see what Junior did? Junior says, OK, I, I got you a little out of shape. Let me back up here and pick you up and let's try that again. Look at the speed, though, of that 31. Jeff Burton and his teammate Harvick in that 29. Looked like they gained 50 horsepower all of a sudden. Well, they gained 20 miles an hour. 20 miles an hour faster than what you can run by yourself. Casey Kane has dropped back by himself. Uh -oh. And there's a problem with Kane's mount. He has lost the draft. He's got something and wrong with we'll his come car. To Road. Yeah, he's got a bad, he's got a problem. Most. Yeah, set four. You coming? Tony Stewart's new drafting partner, Denny Hamlin. On the inside, on the outside, Burton, Harvick, Earnhardt, and Boyer. Three Childress cars and the Hendrick car of Earnhardt. Last night with telemetry, we saw these engines turn in 9,500 RPM. That's a, an amazing amount of RPM for, uh, for Daytona. And uh, a lot of times in the engines, Larry, you know you'll try something a little bit edgy, a little less oil pressure, a little less of this, trying to get the most speed you can out of the car. Well, as I mentioned, it's a short sprint race. No points, all about winning. Down to Steve Burns in Casey Kane's pit. And Mike, listening to them right now on the radio, Casey simply came over the radio and said, we are toast. They're not sure if it's, Casey didn't think it had overheated, but they've got the hood up on it right now, checking out that power plant. This is Kane's seventh shootout. He has a best finish of fifth. Jimmy Johnson, five-time Sprint Cup champion, plus 16 positions since the start of the race. That team. Go ahead, yeah, this is a couple of cars we talked about at the top of the show. Joey Logano in that 20, pushing Jimmy Johnson in that 40. And that team has done a lot of work since they tested down here. They were not happy with their car. They didn't have speed in the car. They went home and built a brand new car for the 500, and they've really worked hard on this car, and he's from the back to the front. And look at them catch the leaders. They are seventh and eighth. Logano, the orange car, we thought would work with his teammate Kyle Busch, but Busch is mired back in 17. You, it, it's competition. You work with the guy that gives you the best shot at running the best. Doesn't matter what kind of car it is. It's a race car, and that's all you know. Bernhard and Boyer up top as Casey Kane has gone to the garage to be the first car out of tonight's Budweiser shootout. 
Look at them go down the back over there. And look at them three, come. Three, four, five wide. They're going into turn three. Look at the next group with a big head of steam trying to catch them. Greg Biffle on the bottom. That group was coming so fast it broke up. Yeah, they had to lift up out of the throttle. They were closing so fast and they broke, uh, lost their momentum just a little bit. Down to the pitch, Matt Yoakum. Two-time shootout winner Jeff Gordon has been running primarily in the back, and he's already learned a big lesson looking ahead to that final segment. And they're pairing up. We better find us a partner. I mean, not for this run, but for the next one. And he told Jeff Dickerson, his spotter, we need to find someone. Right now, he's paired up with the 78 of Smith. We talked about speed. We are already seeing speeds at over 204 miles an hour. Some of these cars getting a push, catching another group. Well, we knew last night they ran 203, and there were a lot of two-car drafts that did that. Felt like tonight when everybody got out there, the speeds would go up even more. We haven't had speeds here uh, this fast in about 20 years now. Jeff Burton led two laps in the 31. First time he's led a shootout in his sixth appearance. <laughs> Look at all the paired up cars. Why is it that two cars work so well? Three cars in a row doesn't work at all. Well, you got you got a pusher and a shover. And if you get another car in there, the guy behind the third guy messes the whole rhythm thing up. Seeing a lot of teammates. But the one thing about it, that group leading, that's not teammates. In fact, that's a Chevrolet and a Toyota right there. Well, your friends are where you find them. Tony Stewart leads the Budweiser shootout at Daytona. The Budweiser shootout on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. You know, Mike, Larry, we're running around here at 203, 4, 5, 6 miles an hour, and these cars look more comfortable. They look like they're doing it easier than they do when they run 195 or 190 miles an hour. Just with ease and no problem. Still two by two at the front. Jeff Burton leading. You're watching from Jimmy Johnson. Two wide inside. This was a lap ago. Two wide inside. More coming. Two wide inside. Let's go. Man, two wide inside. That's what he said. That's what Logano just said. Go, man, go. Teammates on the bottom, Jeff Burton and Kevin Harvick, 31 and 29. A very unlikely pair. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kyle Busch paired up and then Kevin Harvick two time defending champion of this race with Mark Martin. That right there shows you how much you slow down when you don't stay tied to the car in front of you. 17 laps complete 18 in seven more. We will have the uh, halftime break the five and the twenty nine. They just made the swap up there in the middle of the corner and did it real nice. They didn't lose any time. They didn't lose any speed and uh, the 22 of Kurt Busch said you go in front and let me push you and see how that works. And let's explain why they need to do that Larry why one driver just can't stay behind the other for too long. Well you need air flowing through the front end to, to cool the water in the radiator and when you stay back there for so long you're getting the air, no air flow so you have to swap but you want to do the swap as quick as possible because that slows the tandem down the least amount. Nine lead changes among four drivers so far. Kyle Busch and Dale Earnhardt Jr. swap positions. And we got it. Look at the average speed. 195 miles an hour at this point. Now Kyle Busch has come from 21st to leading this race in 18 laps. Hold the phone. Third place. <laughs> well, he fourth, led it for fourth, a little bit. Fifth. Fourth place. <laughs> now arriving at gate 12. How quickly 13. things change. Krista. The ultimate example of teamwork with the 31 and 29. Kevin Harvick telling his teammate Jeff Burton, just tell me where you want to go. Jeff's command, I am going to protect the bottom. And then Jeff Burton's new spotter, Brett Griffin, just came on the radio moments ago and said, here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> but that, that's interesting, Krista, because these teammates, they can talk to each other by way of two-way radio. Jeff Burton in the 31 has never won the shootout. His best finish in this event is fifth. Larry, I wouldn't want a lot of voices in my head right now. It takes such concentration to do what these guys are doing at this speed. I wouldn't want a lot of people messing with me right now. I got to focus. Kyle Busch by himself on the bottom. Kevin Conway is right there. Bush comes up. Excuse me. Pardon me, Greg Biffle. I'm going through. 
at Greg Biffle in that 16 car, the lone Ford up there in this group, the top 10. Looking from Biffle at Tony Stewart, the outside pole sitter. Michael Waltrip ripped off a lap over 206. So did Kyle Busch as they were catching groups of cars. And we saw that in practice, Mike. The Toyotas were super, super fast in race trail. The closing rate on the front group of cars is exceptional. It'll take your breath to watch how fast one pair of cars can catch a pair up ahead. By yourself, you run 184 miles an hour. Right now, we're running 205, 206. See Jeff Gordon in that 24 car worked his way up toward the front, getting the push from Clint Boyer in a 33. It's almost like Clint had to back off Mike because his car was maybe getting a little too warm. Four laps to the break. And during those 10 minutes, the teams will be able to add fuel tires and do anything they would on a normal Sprint Cup pit stop. Tomorrow, who will win the pole and the front row for the Great American Race? You'll see it live on Fox tomorrow, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Daytona 500 qualifying. After running this fast tonight, Larry, tomorrow afternoon, you say, way, man, this thing won't <laughs> go anywhere. It won't run out of, a, of its own way. Jeff Gordon up there with Clint Boyer chasing the two Childress cars. Yikes. Ryan Newman in that man, no man, it's almost getting got tight. out of bounds. A little tight right there. Newman was really, really pushing the issue. Watch that double yellow line because NASCAR watches it closely. I You're not allowed to advance your position beneath the yellow line. I believe Newman gave that back to Joey Logano because that was a borderline pass. But there's a pass for the lead. Kevin Harvick in that 29, giving his teammate Jeff Burton that push. And a good example of that closing rate as two pair of cars come up on the lead pair. Yeah, here's where the problem's going to be right here. You got a lap car down on the bottom there. Really going to bottle these guys up here for a second off turn four. It's uh, Derek Cope in the 64, the red and yellow car. Woo! I bet these guys will be glad to take a break. They've been holding their breath quite a bit here for the last several laps. That will happen in two laps. We've been caution free so far. Only one car out of the race. That is Casey Kane. I got to believe that's the fastest 20 laps I've ever seen. 196 miles an hour average. And still look, two, four, six, eight, ten cars in contention to lead the next lap. Joey Logano in that 20 pushing Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car on the bottom of the racetrack right against that double yellow line. And look, here comes Kenseth up the high side with his teammate at Roush Fenway Racing, Carl Edwards in the 99. And really what you're trying to do right now is figure out where do I need to be and who do I need pushing me to win this thing when it comes down to the end of the day. But I have been thoroughly impressed, and this could go away near the end of this race, those two Richard Childers cars, Jeff Burton and Kevin Harvick, how much they've worked together in these first 24 laps. And whatever NASCAR rule change they made so you couldn't say tucked up under each other very long, I don't think it's working too good, because that 29 has been glued to the back of that 31 for about 10 laps now. You're watching four Chevrolets and two Toyotas on the point as they battle for the lead and in one more lap we will get the halftime break Dale Jr. said in pre race I want to try to get to the front before the end of the 25 laps so I have a good restart spot for the final 50 he's done it but can he stay there here they come to lap 25 this would be the final lap scored it's Burton and Harvick scooting out front junior by himself and then Matt Kenseth 12 the top 12 cars within a half a second of each other. Have we got this season started or what? But I think that coming to the line right there tells you what these guys can do when the money, when it's money lap. Breathe, DW, well, breathe. My heart is about to pound out of my chest. Halftime coming up in the Budweiser shootout of Daytona, live on Fox. <laughs> the Budweiser shootout on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, proud sponsor of the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. 
Everybody has come to pit road during this halftime break, and there at the head of the line is Dale Jr. and right near him, Matt Yoakum. Lessons already learned, Mike Joy. Dale Jr. told Steve Letard on the radio, I would prefer to work with the 48 of Jimmy Johnson, not because he didn't like working with Kyle Busch. It's just the fact that Busch's bumper didn't seem to mesh as well with Junior's. He said it pushed Junior all over the place. The 48 he worked well with during practice, but he said once you get with somebody, it seems like you're stuck with them. So once you find somebody, that's your wingman. Krista? Different strategies for teams during this break. Jeff Burton's team electing to take fuel only. They did not make a tire change. The plan for the 29, his teammate, was to make a four-tire change. Jeff Burton and Kevin Harvick talking to each other during that segment and saying, quote, this is fun. Dick Bergeron? Uh, Jimmy Johnson started in the 23rd spot, worked his way up to fifth with Joey Logano pushing him. They got passed by just about everybody. Back to 15th. He's now fifth, Krista. Or Steve. Well, Dick, an interesting observation by Mark Martin. He and Kurt Busch were running in the top six together. However, when they swapped to help cool the engine down, they dropped like a rock. Mark said, we're not fast enough with the 22 pushing me. Everybody on pit road for service and adjustments. Then we'll line them up for 50 laps to complete the Budweiser shootout. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Everything we've learned making tires from one of racing's most grueling proving grounds inspires what we roll into ours. Goodyear, more driven as NASCAR on Fox welcomes you back to Daytona International Speedway. We're at the break after 25. We have 50 laps to go in the Budweiser shootout and Jeff Burton with help from his teammate. We talked about two car tango. His uh, dancing partner Kevin Harvick pushing him out to the lead. They've led the most laps. Jeff Burton has at 13. He's standing by with our Chris Devoto. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. RCR teammates definitely leading this Daytona dance right now, leaning in the car with Jeff Burton. So obviously you and Kevin Harvick are, are uh, doing things right. What do you need to do differently or do you just need to do the more of the same thing in this next segment? Well, I think we learned an awful lot. I mean, it was, uh, there's, you know, we're not used to racing like this. It's a whole nother environment. So that was, a, I mean, we learned more in 25 laps than we did in, in three days, four days of testing. So, you know, Obviously, we, we can do a few things better, um, but you know we got to keep communicating and, and looking at all the little stuff because you make one little mistake, it's a big time difference. Thanks, Jeff. Steve? Krista with Denny Hamlin. Denny, we heard you at uh, when the caution came out. You said, every time I got a run, somebody got on my right rear. What exactly are you learning in those first 25 laps? Well, you're just trying to figure out how long you can push. Um, you know, for us, it seemed like it was you know, a pretty decent amount of time, but it's just so tough to, once you do get up front, even if you got a two-car draft going, uh, the wake is so big that it allows the other two-car packs to catch up immediately. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a yo-yo effect, and, and really uh, it's, it's tough to stay up front. Uh, so it's, it, it's pretty good. What's tricky is when you get a big run going and you got two two-car packs that are side-by-side, side, someone's got to go somewhere. So uh, that's where it gets kind of dicey. All right, good luck, Danny. Back to the hotel. All right, yeah, thanks, Steve. It's funny, you didn't see anybody out by themselves, at least oh, near no. the front. It was all these two-car tangos that we talked about. You were listening in on the radio communication between Jeff Burton and Kevin Harvick. I, and the thing is so interesting, we saw this during testing down in January, Chris, and you had to get hooked up. Your teammate was so important if you could work with him. And right now, we're seeing the 31 or 29 pull this thing off. Picture perfect. But what I did pick up on is the lead car has to treat the rear car as one. I mean, they've got to be able to work together, and that's where the spotters are really come into play here tonight. They're working extra hard to be able to find these guys a hole, keep them out of trouble. You see them up there way above the Daytona International Speedway. They've got to be on their toes because all this stuff is happening at a faster rate than even they've been expected to and what their training has been uh, working with all these years. I mean, these are speeds. I mean, they are really fast. Uh, we've hit over 200. Carl Edwards uh, currently seventh. He's standing by with our Dick, uh, our Dick Bergman. Dick? Well, Carl, we've never seen a race quite like this. How do you win this thing? You know how I was having all that trouble with my helmet? I haven't thought about that once. <laughs> this is crazy, man. Um, I don't know how you're gonna win it, but, but I'll tell you what, I've had, I have to have more trust than I've ever had in the guys uh, that I'm around. You, when I was pushing Matt, I couldn't see through his car. And so he had to have a huge amount of trust for me not to push him into something bad. And when he's pushing me, it's the same thing. You, know, you get up to a group and you think, oh boy, this could be, uh, this could be insane, but everybody's doing a really good job. And, it's just, uh, it's white knuckle. I mean, I, you know, I feel like I've been riding a dirt bike or something. My hands are, uh, you know, are, are, are worn out from holding the wheel. 
200 miles an hour and you can't see where you're going. Wow, what a race. Jimmy Johnson, five time the dominator, getting some work here. Currently fifth with 50 laps to go. We've had 12 lead changes, hit our fastest lap over 206 miles an hour. The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is sponsored by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Goodyear, more driven by Warner Brothers Pictures Unknown. In theaters February 18th and by the Chevy Silverado HD Motor Trends 2011 Truck of the Year. Next Saturday night, 9 p.m. on Speed, the Budweiser Roast of Kevin Harvick. Join Tony Stewart, Elliot Sadler, Comedians Earthquake, Jeremy Hotz, and John Reap and others as they roast the former Daytona 500 winner with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers of the Hollywood Hotel and getting ready after what 25 laps in less than 20 minutes. You talk about fast. It's fast and I, it's kind of like that movie unknown. We still <laughs> it's unknown what's going to happen in his next 50 laps because what I picked up on Chris right now your dancing partner your spotter is going to be so important and staying up front is going to be the must you have to do because you get shelf at the back anywhere past maybe about 10 laps to go. I don't think you can get your way back up there quick enough. All right, let's rejoin Daryl, Larry, and Mike. And what if you're one of those guys, we heard the drivers talk, you're in a, you're in a two-step and then somebody else wants to try to join in, then what do you do? Drive around them. <laughs> I mean, what, to to answer to Jeff's question, the problem with trying to stay up front is we have seen that a group following is faster than the group up front. The record for lead changes, Daryl, in this race is 23 in 2009. We've already had half that many in half as many laps as we have left to run. I don't see how we can't break that record tonight. I don't either. And these, these fast speeds are really, I, I, I can't get over how comfortable the guys look. I know I'm, li I'm li listening to them. They're saying, this is ridiculous, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is crazy, <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, they're really having a good time out there, but they do have their hands full. This is difficult racing. Got to anticipate your every move. Well, the strategy is dance with the first girl you can get your hands on to line up with you, or first car, that is. What strategy for 50 laps now? Well, yeah, you may want to find someone else that you think that can make you run faster, but I think you're a little bit afraid to get off the car you're with. I love what Denny Hamlin said, and I think he's in the same boat as a dozen and a half cars. I know I can win this thing. I just got to figure out where to put myself on that last lap. You've got to keep up the intensity. 25, but you got 50, but you got to keep up the intensity. Oh, intensity. The vice is going to tighten. 50 laps to go in the Budweiser shootout of 2011, live on Fox. down 50 to go in the Budweiser shootout of 2011. Bigger on duty because <laughs> here they come. Here's your Budweiser race summary. Jeff Burton led 13 laps and he led at the end of the first segment one of five leaders 12 lead changes average speed. Look at that average speed 196 and a half miles an hour. Saw a tweet from Lance Armstrong about an hour ago. He was just settling in to watch the Bud shootout. Glad to have him and you with us tonight on Fox. Pace car ready to pull to the left and we'll turn them loose for 50 laps. Jeff Burton, Kevin Harvick up front. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt Kenseth, Jimmy Johnson, the top five. Logano, Edwards, Kyle Busch, Gordon and Boyer, the top 10. Green flag. Jeff Burton at 31 wasted no time finding his wingman, his teammate Kevin Harvick in that 29 on that restart. On the high side, Kenseth with Logano, then Kyle Busch. Everybody pretty tightly packed. Now, Tony Stewart spent a bit of time sitting there on pit road doing what, Krista? Mike, the reason was radio issues. In fact, they got it fixed because Tony said, yep, I've got you, I've got you. They were able to communicate a little bit during that break, but they were already making plans. If they lose radio transmission again, they were planning on using signals. Tony would let him know based on where he was running on the track. He would pull out a line and let him know that he would need to come in. Right now, so far, I am listening.
to him and they are able to communicate at this time. I think, Mike, we're going to see some wild and crazy racing. What these guys right here realize, you can't let everybody get away from you. This is why this is the wilder start than the first than the first uh, start was. Well, Kyle Busch shot out of the middle and ran away from his wingman. He had to drop down to the bottom to pick one up and nobody's gone with him. He's a lonely boy as teammate Joey Logano is going to go around him, not with him. And this is where you, again, you got to kind of anticipate, drag the brake a little bit. You don't want to get out of the throttle. Use a lot of brake here to slow the car down and keep the mat, throttle on the mat. Now there's nothing wrong with the 18, but Kyle Busch running by himself without being paired up. He was like a drag shoot, and everybody found it easier to go around rather than go with. We we have seen all during testing and all the last two days, the only way a Toyota really goes, if it's, it's got someone pushed it, but there comes those RCR cars battling their teammate, Clint Boyer, on the bottom that's being pushed by Biffle in the 16. I asked, uh, you know, I asked Harvey, I said, what makes you so good here? He said, always have a fast car. He's got a fast car. He and his teammate, Burton. The mayor, oh, oh trouble. trouble. Junior's in the wall, Montoya. Joy Logano. Logano gets hit, Edwards in the infield, and more. I, I just saw that yeah. coming, Mike. It was a much wilder start than what even the first start was. I think these guys got a little too confident, a little too comfortable. Regan Smith left of your screen involved. First caution flag of the night on track. We do count the competition caution at lap 25, and there is Kevin Conway driving one of Joe Nemechek's cars. His night is done. Darrell, let's have a look. Let's see what happens here. The, of course, we were talking about the 18, uh, which was having trouble going, and now he's got Junior up behind him, and I said he had to anticipate. Looks like Bobby Labonte in the 47 car. Ooh, Carl oh, Carl Lincoln Smith. I believe Carl got in the. the he, he definitely got into Dale Jr. I'm not sure uh, if, if Regan Smith pushed him up there or not. Take another look at it. From Jimmy Johnson. Outside too wide. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Carl got into the right Outside. rear of Dale Jr. Job, and Dale Jr. Job. got into the 78 car of Regan Smith. Almost looked like Carl Edwards tried to go through a hole that wasn't quite wide enough for that 99 car. Yeah, possibly. he's trying to slip right in there and he couldn't make it. And then Dale Jr. bounced off of Carl and, and got into Regan Smith. A wild slide into the corner. And let's take Joey Logano's wild ride. was holding his line till he got center punched by the 97 and then that big noise was Montoya did a smart thing though he let go of the steering wheel because if you hang on to that steering wheel very long it can break your uh, break your break your wrist Krista teammates of 29 and 31 both and both in just for a splash of fuel tire change on Jimmy Johnson fuel for Mark Martin tires for Clint Boyer but as far as those cars getting fuel, whether you took tires or not, Steve, this should get them possibly to the end. Still going to be close, though. It is Larry Mack, Scott Wood, the gas man. He's a veteran gas man, making sure he gets as much gas in as he can. Denny Hamlin is going to get four tires. They're also going to clean the grill. Crew Chief Mike Ford saying, take your time. Speed isn't of the essence right now. Let's get it right. That will erase any chance of beating Bill Elliott's record speed for the event, 197.8 miles an hour in 1987. First on-track calamity of the night in the Budweiser shootout. Lots more to come. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. The Budweiser shootout on Fox is sponsored by Pizza Hut and the new Big Dipper Pizza, only $12 and only at your Pizza Hut. Under caution here in Daytona in the Budweiser shootout next Sunday on Fox. What we think will be the most competitive and exciting Daytona 500 in recent history. 
begins with the Daytona 500 pre-race show delivered by Pizza Hut. Next Sunday at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Fox is bringing Brad Paisley to Daytona. He'll be part of the pre-race show, and it's in high definition only on Fox. Watch the 78 car behind Jeff Gordon. Yeah, the 78 got over into the uh, 99, and that's what turned the 99 into Dale Jr. in the 88 car. That's what, the, when you get a good look at it, the 78 really kind of created that whole thing. All right, Dick Bergman is with Dale Earnhardt Jr. And he's in the garage right now. You just had a chance to see a couple of replays. What was it like through your windshield? Well, I just uh, run along there. Me and uh, Jimmy were trying to work together and, and get ready uh, for our pit stop. And uh, just uh, we were uh, hooked in the rear, uh, the right rear quarter panel. And uh, I was watching it, and, you know, and I saw this gold car coming at me. <laughs> and I thought I had it saved for a second, but um, yeah, it's hard to drive them that fast when they're out of control. But it was fun. Um, the racing might look kind of crazy, but it was pretty fun. Uh, it's a new style of racing for sure, and uh, I was enjoying it. Um, we were just kind of waiting around, lining, trying to line ourselves up uh, for the pit stop, and and it was just uh, too many race cars going for the same piece of real estate there, but we'll be all right. NASCAR's most popular driver out of it tonight. Thanks, Junior. Now, here's a look from Michael Waltrip. Look to the right of Carl Edwards' gold car. The black car is Regan Smith. Yeah, this looks like that uh, Regan got into Carl first, and that's what kind of started that whole thing. But like Dale Jr. said, all going for the same spot. Came across and just wasn't quite clear. It is a game of inches here in Daytona. Budweiser shootout on Fox is sponsored by the new 2011 Ford F-150, built for tough. By Lowe's, let's build something together. By Subway restaurants, it's February. All month, any footlong's a $5 footlong. And by GoDaddy.com, domains, websites, and everything in between. We're under caution at Daytona for a multi-car crash. Here's the sprint in-car camera. On board, Regan Smith. Let's see what the Regan looks like. He's looking over. He's about a 48. There's the 88. And then. That's it. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. 88 hooks, bud. Hang on. It is a game of inches, and Dick Bergeron at 200 miles an hour, the inches okay? add up pretty fast. Yeah, they sure do. Carl Edwards, you were watching that replay. You were right smack in the middle of it. What was it like? Oh, just uh, it's just too bad that ended up like it did. I think all of us were going for, we are all going for kind of the same area of the racetrack, trying to get an advantage in that pack. And I stuck my nose up there between uh, the 88 and the 78, and I don't think that far away his spotter could tell that I was in there or something, because um, uh, Regan was just kind of coming down. And if I if I had known what was behind me, I'd have stabbed the brake and, and got out of there. But uh, but I thought any second he was going to give me a little space. Just too bad we tore up race cars and. Um, We'll get this easy seat car put back together one way or another. All right, thank you. Out of the race, along with Edwards as we go green, Joey Logano, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Juan Paulo Montoya, Regan Smith, and Kevin Conway. Back under green, 41 laps to go. And will things settle down a bit? Well, I don't know. I think they will a little bit, but not a whole lot. This is, a, this is, the, this is one that counts right here. This is what I've seen about keeping the intensity up. I think they may have heard me. At the front, a familiar pair, Jeff Burton and Kevin Harvick, teammates at Richard Childress Racing. Matt Kenseth leads the pursuers with his Roush Fenway Ford teammate, Greg Biffle. Now, while we were in break, everyone came in during the caution and topped off the fuel tanks, but leaving pit road was another one of those land rush affairs. You would think all the action will be on the track at 205 miles an hour, whatever, but even at the slowest speeds, which is pit road speed at 55 mile an hour, watch this. But, but Kyle Trouble, Bush, turn one. Kyle Bush and Mark Martin. Check out, check out. Oh. I think Mark's car looked like it hit anything. They still have a shirt on TV, you okay? Looks like both drivers may drive away from this one. 
Now under last year's configuration the front splitters would be heavily damaged on these cars but that is a change this year no more splitter on the front end right rear damage on the Mark Martin's car there at the bottom of your screen this is two cars that had worked together a lot tonight the 18 and the 5 whoa just got in there on the outside and uh, you know bumping pushing each other in the corner like that over 205 miles an hour the 18 car got loose. Denny Hamlin in the 11 narrowly misses another one from the Goodyear blimp. Third pair of cars right of your screen. Just got in that real high up there with Mark tucked right up under him pushing him and it got him side got the 18 car Kyle Busch loose. I heard a number of guys and, I, and then I've watched Kyle in practice. His car wasn't the best handling car of the cars I watched uh, out there on the racetrack the last couple of days. It's like he just had him at the wrong angle at the wrong place on the racetrack and maybe wasn't completely squared up with him had him more than that left rear. Yep. And, it, and that's tight getting into turn one. You got to get into both turns one and three. You right. really crank it in there with somebody laid right up against you. Pretty heavy contact. Wow. Let's watch uh, and ride with Kyle Busch. Both cars have made it back to Pit Road. Here's a look from Jimmy Johnson. Outside. In front of you, in front of you, smoke, smoke, smoke. Oh, yeah. That was nice. Tell you what, not only was it a close call for Jimmy Johnson, another close call for Denny Hamlin at 11. Yeah, but what were all the sparks flying out from under Hamlin's car as he tried to drive through it? Oh, from getting down on the flat. Yeah, that's it. It, it, it. Probably the skirts on the side were uh, dragging on the racetrack. Matt? Cosmetic damage on the 18. The crush panel was damaged on the left rear to Steve. And Denny Hamlin comes down pit road. And uh, was it a narrow, narrow miss after all? Well, Denny thinks he ran over something. He said to make sure to check the valence. Also locked up his brakes and flat spotted all four tires. By the way, Mark Martin said the front end of his car is killed. He said, I just turned him around. I don't know what happened. We've been doing that all night. Steve, I would agree with Hamlin's assessment. There were sparks up ahead. Something came off a car ahead of him, and it looked like Denny rolled over it and more sparks. Kyle Busch around off the front bumper of Mark Martin. We'll be back to Daytona after this. The Budweiser Shootout on Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And great times for Jeff Burton, who is back in the lead. His Richard Childress Racing teammate Kevin Harvick right there with him. And Kevin Harvick going for what would be an unprecedented third straight win here in the Budweiser shootout, getting ready to go green. Let's rejoin Daryl Larry and Mike. Thanks, Chris. Jeff Burton has led six times for 20 laps. Most of all drivers, no one else has led more than four. Mark Martin has taken his car behind the wall, where he joins Logano, Earnhardt, Montoya, Edwards Smith Conway and Kane. So we get set to restart with 16 cars on track and 37 laps to go. Our field is dwindling away. We've got two Roush Fenway cars pushing the two Richard Childress cars. Let's see if Burton can get back down in front of his teammate. He's done that in the last two restarts gets right down in front of Kevin Harvick. Whoa, the up the outside. Here comes Kyle. All the way to the front. He hung back and got a slingshot restart. Shades of Richard Petty. And look at this. He goes to the lead, but he has no help. Can he stay there? Yeah, we'll that see. was simply because he got started a little earlier than the other group. <laughs> well, he had a, he got a late set. Every, all, everything he did was legal. He went around on the outside, on the right-hand side, and you can do that. But look at this group right here. Jeff Gordon in that 24. Clint Boyer in the 33 pushed him. He'll take the lead now. Look at Kyle Busch who has no friends. Like a yo-yo. All the way to the front. All, all the way, way to the back. back. He'll find his friends. That's a fast car.
Riding with Kyle Busch. You see how far he hangs back. Now he's way on the gas before everybody else. 64 up top. Here comes the slingshot. And everybody gave him room. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even catch the pack to well past the green flag. I can't, I can't believe it. Nobody it, it tried to move up. <laughs> and get a hold of that ride. I think he might have come past him too fast for anybody to hook on to him. The fact that that outside lane was open like that was pretty, pretty amazing. Jeff Gordon comes to the front. He's up there in the high lane with the 33 of Clint Boyer. Matt. Mike, under caution, Jeff Gordon said to Alan Gustafson, I just figured it out. This is like playing chess on the edge of a cliff with the wind blowing 50 mile an hour gust. Alan said, and we know who will do well in that situation, playing chess with 50 mile an hour gusts. And Jeff says, well, we'll have to wait and see on that one. New pairing of driver and crew chief, Jeff Gordon with Alan Gustafson, part of the Hendrick swap uh, for 2011. Well, I don't know what he was doing, but he just, he just dropped anchor, whatever it was. <laughs> that Childress pair up front is going to be tough. A 31 car and the 29 right behind him is a good combination. To Dick Bergeron with Mark Martin. And Mark, you've run more of these races than anybody else in today's field. Is this the wildest shootout you've been in? I was having a blast. I, you know, I... I got to apologize. I, you know, I turned Kyle around. I have no idea why, why or how that happened. You know, uh, Kurt and I ran the whole 25 laps hooked together, and everything was perfect. And and uh, Kyle and I got hooked. I got hooked on him, and everything was good. And we went into turn one, and his back end just started coming around. And I don't know if we needed wait till the tires get hotter. Maybe they were a little cold. I, I'm not sure. I. I I can't figure out why that happened because it was just a, a, a non-issue, you know, before that. We were able to run, you know, block through the corners and, you know, wasn't even a sweat. So, I don't know. I, I hate it. We, we were doing good, man. I was having a good time. If the veterans don't know, imagine what the youngsters are thinking out there. Well, they'll have a chance to talk it over as Kyle Busch just pulled into the garage. That was Mark Martin's 23rd Bud shootout tying Bill Elliott for the most all-time. Tell you what, guys, we're seeing a couple new players up there at the front. We're seeing Kurt Busch in that 22 car getting a push by Jamie McMurray and that one, the winner from the Daytona 500 last year. That one car, they've been searching for speed ever since they unloaded the other night. But you know, Kurt Busch is a, he's really, really good on these restrictor plate races. Uh, he's had some really great runs. He pushed Ryan Newman to the win here a couple of years ago, and uh, he always is right up there in the front. Yeah, he has a double handful almost of second place finishes here at Daytona, but has never won a race here. That's the double deuce, the 22 of Kurt Busch. It just appears to pass those two children's cars, you're going to have to have the perfect two cars hooked together. Well, we'll see if uh, if a 22 and a one can pass a 31 and a 29. There, what I'm seeing is McMurray in the one car. He keeps ducking the right side of that car out. I think that car may be getting a little warm right behind that 22 car. I've really been surprised how long they've been able. All these guys have been able to stay hooked up. We thought that NASCAR made a little adjustment on the rules that that would stop that from uh, from them being able to run together that long. But so far, I haven't seen that happening. Jeff Burton comes around to lead his 26th lap in the offseason. Burton had a cameo in the Fox movie Change of Plans. Wonder what his plan is for these final 30 laps. He's wondering what is his teammate's plan. Kevin Harvick, is he going to be content just to keep riding there? And there goes some of those two Hendrick cars, Jeff Gordon in the 24 and Jimmy Johnson in the 48. And they said, OK, boys, y'all got it. Y'all caught us. Let's go. Let's see if we can pass these guys. My, my fault there, that actually Greg Biffle in the 16 car pushing Jimmy Johnson. Four cars together, not really any better than two cars paired up. And no. that is certainly a change from what we're used to seeing here. But one thing that isn't kind of impressive is they're able to go around that 31 and 29 on the outside. Haven't seen a lot of outside passes. bit of a speed differential two miles an hour and that can be a lot here three miles an hour four now as Kurt Busch tries to pull away and look at Jimmy Johnson 201 into the corner 
with Greg Biffle pushing in his Ford. You know, Kurt Busch in that 22 car, he spent the entire two practice sessions as he looked like that 48 car is going to get that run on the outside, trying to find a dancing partner, being the only Dodge in the race. I think you're right about McMurray there. He's looking for air because he comes out behind the uh, 22 way too much. Jimmy Johnson has just become the race's ninth different leader. The 21st lead change of the night, 23 is the record. And see, that, that's a Chevrolet leading and a Ford running second. So you just work with whoever will make you go the fastest. But what I love about this situation, Daryl, is that the cars in the pairs behind the lead. Oh, hard. Michael Waltrip into the wall. 14, got to turn around he there. and Tony Stewart were coming. We just ran through the grass. They were coming no, toward the front. I just... Running ninth and tenth. Waltrip, the two-time Daytona 500 winner, and Stewart, the three-time Bud Shootout winner. Here's a look, Daryl. Let's see what happens here. They're going down the back. This looks a lot like Mark Martin and Kyle Busch to me. Tony gets right up on Michael, gets him a little wee bit loose, and around he goes. That pushing off into the corner, either one, one or three, looks like it's a little treacherous for some of these guys. But you know, Dale, it's almost like both situations has been the car wasn't just locked onto that car. It was maybe right there actually pushing on the left rear just a little bit. Got him, got, got him a little off center. So we can get a shot out the back here and see what do it. There's Tony just right on him. A little movement getting in the corner. And then just a quick little D Dido right there. And that's a hard hit. 14 got to turn around there, try to push through. We just ran through the grass. Yeah, we're done. Waltrip was in ninth position. Oof. You think that nose isn't tough? That's a that, blade, isn't it? The thing is, uh, is kicking up some earth. And, and you know the old splitter that was uh, on the front of these cars last year that is still attached to the bottom of that new nose. They just cut it down and fit it underneath this new nose. It's it's permanent. Can't adjust it like you could last year, but it's the old splitter. Now on the last caution flag, a lot of drivers stopped for fuel, not because they couldn't make the 50 laps, but wondering if we have several green white checkers to finish this off. How many of those could they make? And now Bobby Labonte's on pit road and Matt Kenseth. Here's Dick Bergman. With Kyle Busch, who crashed out after a push from behind from the number five, Mark Martin. Mark said that, and we're going to see it on the uh, replay here, Kyle. Mark said he didn't do anything different than he'd been doing all night long, and he didn't understand why what he had done turned your car. Can you explain it? Uh, no, I can't either, because I didn't do anything different either. You know, it's just, uh, there's plenty of film tonight for the highlight reels, that's for sure. Uh, that's about basically what we're what we're filling up is uh, Sports Center tonight, so. Uh, it's it's a bummer deal, you know. It's just the way that we've got a product out there right now with this bump drafting deal and that pushing two car lockup deal. But uh, I just hate it for these guys. You know, we wanted to come out here with uh, with a bang on. Well, I guess we did come out of here with a bang, but uh, we wanted to come out of here with some good results this week. And uh, unfortunately, this isn't the way to start it. But uh, I tell you what's going to be more interesting footage is driving back to the garage area. <laughs> Go back to my in-car camera with that because it was a maze back there. I had no idea where I was going. Wow, wow, crazy night, Kyle Busch. And a great sense of humor from a fellow who won more than 20 races last year across NASCAR's top three divisions. What I saw when the 18 was headed off into turn one, he was way higher than what you normally would enter that corner. And it's probably a little dirty when you get up that close on corner entry. And I think with Mark laid up behind him and Kyle that wide getting into the corner, it just was enough to get that right rear and basically the loose stuff and around the car with. Well, you can bet that all of these teams will have plenty of time to look at the footage between now and Thursday's duel at Daytona, the Gatorade duel to set the field for the 500, and next Sunday's Daytona 500 on Fox. Tonight's aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. Everything we've learned making tires for one of racing's most grueling proving grounds inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven.
Krista. Well, before that caution came out on that last run, we saw something from the 31 and 29 that we really hadn't seen up to that point. They moved up the track. Remember, Jeff Burton wanted to protect the bottom early in the race, but Kevin and Jeff both decided they thought they needed to work the middle groove to prepare for the end of the race. Steve? Chris, the crew chief Kevin Mannion just asked Jamie McMurray if his water temperatures had stabilized, and Jamie said, well, it wasn't really that bad. I just wanted to peek out to the outside to make sure it didn't get hot. Hot. Matt Yoakum and Jeff Dickerson. Jeff Gordon Spotter stressed to Gordon that he needed to drag the brake more. What happened when Gordon in the 33 of Boyer, Boyer faded earlier? The 17 pulled up alongside the left rear of Boyer and stalled them out because he wasn't dragging the brake enough. He started to lose Boyer. That's why they faded to the back. Look for Gordon to drag the brake more this next section. 25 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, Jeff Burton, Kevin Harvick, Jeff Gordon up front. 15 cars still running, and that includes Derek Cope a little off the pace, and Michael Waltrip, whose car has front end damage from being a bulldozer through the grass off the back straightaway. Play the new Fox Fantasy Auto Racing game today at foxsports.com slash fantasy. Pick five stars to compete each week of the season. Challenge your friends, family, and other Fox Sports Racing fans. Get started today at foxsports.com slash fantasy. But just to expand a little bit on that drag and the brake, that's how that two, this two-car tandem works. It's not that that guy picks up that much speed behind you. He's wide open with the throttle. You drag the brake, stay on your throttle wide open, and that way he can get up there and bump draft you and push you. Well, actually, you don't want to bump. You just want him to be able to lay solid against you. That way it doesn't upset your car so much. I think that's what happened to Tony and Michael. Over Tony got a little back a little bit and bumped Michael pretty hard and turned him around. 14 cars will take the green flag for the restart. Michael Waltrip off track as Jimmy Johnson leads them across. Jimmy Johnson was leader. He chose the outside line, but he wasted no time jumping back down in front of Greg Biffle in that 16 car. Biffle seems to be a pretty good pusher, Larry. He was pushing the 24 there a little bit ago, and now he's hooked in there with the uh, 48 of Johnson. I tell you who has really lost the pack, though, Kevin Harvick in that 29 car, the Budweiser car. You see him now working his way back on the outside of Bobby Labonte in the 47. We're riding with him. Will he pick up uh, Jeff Gordon here? He will. Fast closing rate, but he and Gordon get together, see if they can work back toward the front. Noticed that a couple of times with the 24 car. He fell back there earlier with him in the 33. Not sure why. It's like it doesn't get up to speed real good on the restart. 197, 98 miles an hour at 9,800 RPM. There's 200 going off into the corner. That is an incredible amount of RPM to be running here at Daytona where you're holding it wide open all the time. Never, I never thought I'd see the day they'd turn that kind of RPM down here. They've got a ways to go to catch this first half dozen, and here they come, two rows of three across. I'll tell you, that cat's fast right in the middle. And he's getting a big push from his teammate Clint Boyer right up the middle. It's almost like as long as Jeff Burton's got someone pushing him, he has got a fast race car in that 31. Yeah, if he gets in the right spot and he's got some, the right guy pushing him, he's going to be the man to beat. The leader after the first segment has not won this race since Dale Earnhardt Jr. did it in 2003. And right now, Jeff Burton has the scenario he was looking for. He wants the 33 car. He thinks that he and the 33 are the best tandem. And that's who he wanted to work with. Not Kevin Harvick. He didn't say that, but he did say he wanted the 33 to be his mate. 22 laps to go. Everybody paired up at the front. 10 cars strong. Here comes Gordon and Harvick pushing. Yep, here they come again. And look at that head of steam they get on whoever is up front. Is not as quick as the car is closing in the draft. When you get there, nowhere to go. Look at that other tandem, Ryan Newman in that 39, it being pushed by Denny Hamlin in the 11. They look like they've been shot out of a cannon. They're going to try to thread the middle here. And the middle Whoa. closes up. Oh, baby. That was way too close for comfort. Whoa, Nelly, hold on to them, boys. Yeah, she gets a little narrow through the trial <laughs> over here. Three wide it does, brother, at 205 miles an hour. But you know, this is still, even at these high speeds, this is still better racing than, that, than sitting there running around the bottom nose to tail. We're seeing passing, and we're seeing guys putting on a pretty, pretty good show here. 
and three wide anytime they want on this brand new racing surface that has such tremendous grip. When they get the cars going so slow with a small restrictor plate, you can't really race anybody. All you can do is just kind of follow people. We see that you can do a lot of racing with this common. But next Sunday on Fox, can we keep this up for 500 miles? It's, I would say they'll try. I know one thing. They'll be these drivers will be worn out at the end of 500 miles. They're going to be tired tonight, but they'll be worn out next Sunday. It's not only it's not so physically demanding, it's mentally draining to be able to sit here and run this fast this close together. Might have a little headache tomorrow. Looks like Jeff Burton in that 31 car being pushed by Clint Boyer. He's going to go back to his earlier strategy. He's going to try to protect the bottom and stay against that double yellow line. Biffle in that 16 car. He's a wheel man and he's wheeling that thing right now. Pushing Jimmy Johnson right to the front. Johnson back to the lead. And if he holds it all the way around to start finish, we will tie the record for lead changes in the shootout. Krista. Mike, on the track and in the draft is not the only place teammates are teaming up. Also on the radio, when Jeff Burton lost Kevin Harvick in the draft and, and got Clint Boyer, the first thing Jeff said was, get him on my channel. Clint Boyer and Jeff Burton are now able to communicate with each other as Clint switched over to Jeff Burton's frequency. But I tell you what I liked that I saw just a second ago. Yeah, you've got the 48 Jimmy Johnson and the 16 and Greg Biffle, but it's almost like because the 24 of Gordon and the 29 of Harvick was back there pushing them, they were over able to overtake Jeff Burton in the 31. And I, listen, there's no rhyme or reason to what these guys are doing. It's not like they really, it's, it's like you get behind right. somebody, you start pushing them, next thing you know, you're leading the race. And next look, thing you know, here comes another group. Yes, look at this closing rate again. Two pairs of cars just past Jimmy Johnson. Daryl, it's like the old slingshot Petty Pearson days where the last place you wanted to be toward the end of the race was first. It sure seems that way. It's a little early to tell, but it sure seems that way. 24th lead change, a record for the Budweiser shootout in its 33-year history as Kurt Busch goes to the front for the second time tonight. But I think what some of the drivers told us at the break, we're seeing coming to fruition. You have kind of found who your car likes to work with. We've seen that with the 22 of Kurt Busch and McMurray in the one, and there they are fighting for the lead. Well, you just got to make, you know, you got to come to some agreement with whomever you're going to run with that we're going to stick together. That's got to be the agreement. And you can't talk to each other. You just know that instinctively. Kurt Busch is the leader, and now he's the sitting duck. As on the bottom, here comes Ryan Newman with Denny Hamlin. And up the middle, Jeff Gordon. He's got help from Harvick. And look, a lap ago, Kurt Busch was leading, and now he comes across the line in ninth. I'm not sure what Gordon's doing. Seems to be able to work his way up to the front, then he falls back, and then he tries to, maybe he's trying to work on timing. Where do I want to be, and how long does it take me to get to the front? Would you like just a minute or so to catch your breath? We're going to give you one more chance and then take you to the finish in the Budweiser shootout on Fox. Ryan Newman, Denny Hamlin are the lead pair this time around, and as thrilling as it must be to run up and take the lead, it has to be equally maddening to look in your mirror and see another pair coming to snatch it away. But Mike, I, I just these guys are really working well with each other. They see these high, they see these cars closing 10 mile an hour faster. Nobody's jumping up and trying to block anybody. They're kind of saying, okay, here you come, and we got to give you room or you'll run over and wreck us. See Jeff Burton in that 31, getting that push by his teammate, Clint Boyer in the 33. There'd be 11 laps to go this time. Riding with Jimmy Johnson, fifth place car. Just gonna stick his nose out the right when he needs to cool off. He will not pass you. 10 to go, I think. Kevin Harvick in eighth place, pushing Jeff Gordon. And that was Jeff Gordon spotter Jeff Dickerson telling Jeff Gordon what Kevin Harvick is doing. He's just trying to cool it down a little bit. Well, 
if you think about Talladega, what did the 29 do to pass Jamie McMurray? Saw him do it in practice. Timed it, timed it where he could dive out right at the start finish line. I honestly believe that's what the 24 and the 29 have got planned, timing it to be there at the right time to be in front. Pat? Mike, earlier in the race, Jeff Gordon was hitting his rev limiter and then becoming disengaged with his wingman. The similar situation now for Harvick. What they're doing, Harvick will all of a sudden jump on his radio and say, check up, check up, check up. His spotter will then tap Gordon's spotter on the shoulder. Gordon will then trail break so that way they don't become disengaged. That's a new term you wouldn't have heard on the racetrack at Daytona or Talladega. They became disengaged. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it goes back to coopetition. Yeah, it does. does. <laughs> Just please don't disengage me. <laughs> Ryan Newman on point. The Rocket at one time in his career was winning the pole every four times, once every four times they had qualifying. Denny Hamlin, the runner up for the Sprint Cup last year, locked on to Newman. Here comes Kurt Busch and McMurray right in their tire tracks. Once these cars get into the banking, they're real stable. You can really push, and it doesn't seem to move the car around much. Where they're really the most, the hardest to drive is right here where you see right now. Going down these straightaways, the cars want to move around, wobble around a little bit more. And here comes Harvick with Jeff Gordon. They've worked their way up to fifth and sixth. Nine laps to go, eight at the stripe. 12 cars on the lead lap to settle it. You know, a group that's kind of fell back a little bit as we've got eight laps to go is Jeff Burton in that 31 with his teammate Clint Boyer in the 33. They're about the fourth duo that's back there. You see him right there just going off into turn one. Now Burton had led 32 laps tonight. But he's in danger of being out of contention as we have seven and a half to go. Oh, remember, you can close at 10 miles an hour faster than the guys in front of you. It doesn't take long to make up a few hundred feet. And I think a lot's going to happen in these last seven and a half laps. Probably a lot of lead changes. But as I watch Ryan Newman in that 39 lead it, the luck he has had at restrictor plate racetracks since he joined Stuart Haas has been unbelievable. It's been terrible. 25 Daytona 500s have had less lead changes than we've seen tonight. And right now it's all strategy. Uh, the, the front four right there, they're trying to figure out who's going to do what, and there's four more guys back here hoping that they can chase them down. Here comes Jeff Gordon with the Kevin, Kevin Harvick and then the two children's cars there of the 31 and 33, trying to get back hooked up here and catch these front four. Six and a half laps to go. That is enough time. But look at these front four. They're all bottom fishers. They're yeah. hugging that yellow line at the bottom of the racetrack all the way through the corners, trying to keep that Whoa. second group from closing. Boy, Jeff Burton dove out behind Kevin Harvey and almost lost that thing. Darrell, it's almost like for a few more laps, Kurt Busch in this 22 and Jamie McMurray in the one may be content just to ride there. Watch this. Watch the 31. The the fast cat there. Man, he swerved out, and when he did, he got a little tap from the back. That was almost a big one. He was trying to pull the slingshot and almost got punted. And just remember, that, that replay doesn't do justice. That was oh. well over 200 miles an hour right there. It's a four-car breakaway. Newman, Hamlin, Bush, McMurray, Chevy, Toyota, Dodge, and Chevrolet. This front four here seems to be maybe pulling away from Jeff Gordon and uh, Kevin Harvey back here this next six. Well, I think as long as they stay that way for a few more laps, they be able, they would be able to fight it out amongst themselves. It sure looks like they're gapping uh, that next group. It's the first time tonight that a multi-car draft has pulled away from any pair. And these pair back there, they keep mixing it up, and that's just going to let that front four just pull away even more. Steve. Just heard Jamie McMurray's strategy. He told his spotter, Lauren Rainier, he said, you tell Kurt Busch's guy, backstretch, last lap, it's go time. I like it. Four laps to go as Ryan Newman leads them across. I think the question is, can any of this, can this six-car group back here chase that front four down? I just don't think it's going to happen. They gapped them too far. 
starting off because they keep mixing it up. They were three wide last time they came by the start finish line. Well, I think they were trying to decide who was the faster so they could get lined up a little bit better because they were not going anywhere. Jimmy Johnson now has gotten in the lead the group uh, head of that group back there. They may be closing a little bit, but they are two seconds behind the front four. And that's a lot to make up in three and a half laps. How about McMurray? I mean, there he is sitting there. Daytona 500 winner from last year wrecked his car in practice earlier today, and here he sets. Not too sure he might not be in a pretty good spot here to win this thing. But Darrell, what I keep seeing with Denny Hammond in the 11 and Matt Murray in the one that we're riding with, they have to keep tucking that right side out to let it breathe. Yeah, they, I mean, they've been like this forever. Uh, and we were concerned that these guys couldn't run over three or four laps. And they're pulling away. It's now 2.2 seconds back to the fifth place car. Yeah, they're a good tenth to two tenths faster than this group, but you can see how this group keeps mixing it up. And a little while ago, we said Jeff Burton had the car that could win this race. Two laps to go. Here are the two packs of lead lap cars. On the left, the leaders, Brian Newman, Denny Hamlin, Kurt Busch, Jamie McMurray. And on the right of your screen, Jimmy Johnson, Greg Biffle, Jeff Gordon, Kevin Harvick, Burton, and Boyer. What this second group has got to do is they got to stay hooked up. So if this front group starts to race each other going down the back straightaway, they will maybe be able to catch them before they get to the start finish line. Denny Hamlin has been stuck like glue to the back bumper of Ryan Newman. Well, he's starting to look like he either needs some air or he's getting a little antsy. Darrell's a lap and a half to go. How antsy would you be? I'd be jerking. I'd be, I'd be all over the place just like he is. I'd be juking. Tell you what, though, flag right here. coming to white the white flag. flag. No pressure out the back. Remember, it will happen if they're going to make the move on the back straightaway. Hamlin locked on to Newman. Kurt Busch with Jamie Mack. Through turn one for the final time. Here we go. He's in your tire tracks. When you go, he's pushing. Now it's go time. There we go. They're looking. They're looking. Can't make it. Can't make Newman. it happen. Newman, the runner up in 2005. Can't make it happen. Has about 2,000 feet to the finish line to win the Bud Shootout for the first time. Hamlin low, Bush up high. Here they come. Three wide to the stripe, and the winner is three wide, three probably wide, Kurt Bush because Denny Hamlin went below the yellow line. Yeah, that that was definitely he he advanced his position by being out of bounds. There's no question on that. One. It is legal for Newman to run him down to the line, and Hamlin probably had one of two choices: go below the line or wreck Ryan Newman. Who will go to victory lane? That is the question NASCAR officials will decide for us. From the Goodyear blimp, let's have a look at the run to the checkered flag. I mean, he is all the way below the line. The question is, would they deem that coming to the checkered flag and game on and uh, when you I've always thought on the last lap when you could see the checkered flag you did what you do what you got to do well, the line is still a line but Daryl does Hamlin get the lead before he goes the, to below the yellow line if so he may be the race winner yeah, it's hard to say about that and McMurray he never came off the rear bumper of Kurt Busch in that 22 car Kurt Busch has won the Budweiser shootout that would have that would have been my call, but I'm, I'm you know you never know. <laughs> Pretty good shootout win in his eighth start. We said earlier he's never won Daytona. Now he has. He has never won a restrictor plate race of any kind. Pretty good way to start a new relationship with a new car number, new paint job, and a winning attitude. And he's going to need, yes, we need a little bit of quarter panel on that thing. I got to bring it back down here. <laughs> he might need a couple of new tires. Kurt Busch has become the 19th different driver to win the Budweiser shootout. Michelle Penzo of colors get to go to victory lane for the second or is it third year in a row? Third year in, third a, year row. in a row. 
They went with Kevin Harvick the last two years and Kurt Busch from Las Vegas, Nevada, a past Sprint Cup champion, still driving for Roger Penske, but out of the blue deuce and into the yellow 22, has won the Budweiser shootout in a finish they will talk about for a while. Jamie McMurray is second. Ryan Newman is third. Fourth unofficially, Jimmy Johnson. And fifth is Greg Biffle. And oh. what will happen with Denny Hamlin, I'm sure who will be placed the last car on the lead lap. Let's have another look at it. Watch Hamlin's move on Newman. Yeah, I just, I don't think, I think Newman just really thought he had it won, and he really didn't protect that bottom good enough. And it cost him dearly. I believe if he'd have stayed down on that yellow line coming off of four, Hamlin would have pushed him to the victory, but he left enough room down there that Hamlin was able to get his nose under him. For the first time in the 33-year history of the Budweiser shootout, a Dodge will drive into victory lane. A lot of two-car tango, a little bit of controversy right at the finish. Yeah, we're back. It's Daytona. Promotional consideration provided by Kurt Busch is the surprise winner of the Budweiser shootout driving Roger Penske's Shell Penzoil Dodge into victory lane. His first restrictor plate win of any kind, Daytona or Talladega, and Matt Yokum's there to greet him. New paint scheme, new number, and new real estate. Thank you, my friend. For Kurt Busch, victory lane at Daytona. What does this mean? Oh, this is unbelievable. I mean, to experience victory lane here, no matter what the race is, it's very special. And I just got to thank my motor department, Jamie McMurray. I mean, those guys, they stuck with us. He had an unbelievable amount of power to push us and kept us in the mix. And when you have a friend like that in this two-car draft, that's what it takes. It's, it's an unbelievable experience to try to manage the cars in front, the car behind and this whole new game of Daytona. So I just got to thank Shell and Pennzoil for believing in us, coming over to Penske, believing in me. I mean, it's a great way to start off with an awesome relationship and to have this Dodge pull into victory lane. We know we're outnumbered by the competition, but to have my teammate in McMurray today, I think that's what it's going to be. I'm going to call it teammate of the day, and McMurray was my man. All right, he started the night out as a lone ranger. He found a wingman and then found victory lane. Steve? Matt with Denny Hamlin. Uh, Denny, tell us about the end of the race and the decisions you had to make. Yeah, you got to. I mean, you know, that uh, that yellow line's there to to protect uh, us and, and, and the fans and stand safety. And, uh, you know, I just chose to, you know, take the safer route. You know, I, uh, a win in a shootout's not worth, uh, you know, sending the 39 through the, the grandstands. And for me, this fast is what we're running. Uh, if I get into his left rear, it, it will that car will go airborne. So for me, it's just um, it was tough posi position. I, I probably should have went high just to avoid that whole thing. Uh, but just you know, I, I was faced with a decision, and and uh, obviously I didn't want to have contact with the 39. Thank you, Denny. Denny, yep. are the two car tandems an acceptable way? Here's a look at it as they came to the line. Hamlin has position on the 39 of Ryan Newman, but not enough racetrack to complete the pass inbounds. And ends up at the tail end of the lead lap. So, Daryl, did Ryan Newman hold the lead too long? Are we back to where the leader's a sitting duck on the last lap at Daytona? I think it's the same thing that happened to Jamie McMurray at Talladega last year. He was convinced they were going to go around him on the outside. I think he moved up just that little bit to try to make him go high, go around him. When he did, the 11 chose to go underneath him. Looked to me like the 11 could have forced him up. They were side by side and avoided going below that yellow line, but he chose not to. But I got to tell you, this was exciting. Yes. It was intriguing. It was interesting. I can't wait for 500 miles of this stuff. Almost three times the amount, but pretty impressed that even though one's a Dodge and one's a Chevrolet, that they had a plan. Roughly five laps to go, and they stuck to it. Kurt Busch in that one car. And as you said, Mike, Kurt gets his first win at a restrictor plate racetrack. Yeah, great win for Kurt and the only Dodge in this field. There'll be four of them entered in the Daytona 500, qualifying tomorrow in the Great American Race. A week from tomorrow right here on Fox. And Chris, well, we've got the first checkered flag of the season, and we're off and running, and uh, can't wait for next Sunday. Yeah, smitten with speed, and yes. a lot of a lot of wrecks. And you know, they talked about Jamie McMurray, last year's Daytona 500 winner, 
led just two laps. That was the fewest of any winner. Kurt Busch only led three laps tonight, and he's a guy who's finished in the Daytona 500 second three times in his career. What do we see tonight, Jeff, with a longer race, obviously, strategy-wise, that we'll see play out a week from Sunday? These guys better be going to the gym between now and next week because they're going to have to get their workout done because this is going to be a tough 500-mile race. You saw how, how hard they had to work all night long to keep their cars up toward the front, and this is what we're going to be seeing, I think, all during this 500 miles. You can't rest at all. These drivers are going to be put to the maximum test the speeds that we're seeing, having to think, having to try to think. I mean, every move that they're making around these racetracks today, you can't ride them. I mean, it's going to be wild. And the irony, Kurt Busch in 2008, Ryan Newman was his teammate. Right. He pushed Newman across for a Daytona 500 win. And the, the, the guy who pushed tonight, and you heard Kurt talk about it, was Jamie McMurray, not teammates. And he is standing by with our Dick Bergman. Well, Jamie McMurray, first in last year's Daytona 500, second tonight. How different is this track? from last year well the racing's a lot different it's uh i hope it was exciting to watch because it's it's so much different than what we've had before but but i was i mean i had a really good time tonight i was happy for uh johnny morris is here from bass pro shops and obviously uh mcdonald's and liftmaster first uh first race with us so that was uh, a great way to uh, to perform for them i wish i could have pushed a chevrolet to the front it's uh kurt and i are really good friends though away from the racetrack we live just uh blockers over from each other and once Juan got wrecked, you know, I came on the radio and I told Lauren, my spotter, I was like, listen, I said, Matt Kenseth or Kurt Busch will be the next two most loyal guys out here to me. So it just worked out that I got behind Kurt and I don't think he had a very fast car, but we put ourselves in the right position right there at the end to, uh, to win it for him. So I'm, I'm really happy for him. Congratulations, job well done. Well, we heard the phrase, we knew that would happen. So is there anything you could have or would have done differently in that closing lap? Well, I knew I was a sitting duck, and I wish it would have been just a two-car battle instead of a four-car battle, but that's selfish of me. So I want to thank Wicks, first of all, for the opportunity and to come here to sponsor us for this race and um, everybody from Chevrolet and everybody else. But um, I didn't know what to expect other than the fact that I knew it was going to happen off of four, and I didn't know if he was going to go high or low, and I didn't know which way, if I was going the right way, pointing in the right direction, the 22 and the one were going to go. So. Um, it's a unique race, and um, I'm glad we got back to the finish line uh, in the way we did. That's probably the most least scratched car we've ever had at a super speedway in my history at Stewart House Racing. So he's taking a positive out of this tonight. Thanks, Krista, the uh, former winner of the Great American Race, and here's one who wants to be a week from Sunday. Remember, it was Kurt Busch who last March in Bristol when he lost out to Jimmy Johnson, those five straight championships, who said, uh, I'd rather lose to any other team out there than to the 48. So maybe Kurt Busch has uh, the, the spunk that it takes to take on uh, Jimmy Johnson once we start rolling a week from Sunday here NASCAR on Fox coming up next on Fox late local news and then fringe after that tomorrow don't forget our front row will be set the poll tonight by the way Dale Earnhardt Jr. Blaster he finished second of the Daytona 500 and then a week from tomorrow the start time noon Eastern the pre-race program delivered by Pizza Hut a lot of fun for you there as we get you ready for the Daytona 500, the running of the Great American Race. And tonight it was uh, exciting with a record number of lead changes, 28 total. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. got wrecked out early, said it may look crazy, but it was fun out there and called it a new style of racing. That's for sure. He definitely is, but he did say he had fun. That's what's more important than anything else. Jeff Burton led the most laps at 32, but in the end, it was Kurt Busch winning the 33rd running of the Budweiser shootouts. For Daryl, Larry, and Mike, Steve, Krista, Matt, Dick, Jeff Hammond, I'm Chris Myers. This was a Barry Landis production directed by Artie Kempner. We hope you joined us Sunday here from Daytona and a week from Sunday for the Great American Race. always puts you right where you're supposed to be. NASCAR home tracks, where what happens on the tracks is just part of the story.